there's the idea and there's the action. And you have to involve both in order to get this complete emergence of the, the, the learning or the uh, manifest expression. Both are required. And wh why I point this out is that sometimes people focus on just one or the other. So think about it. If all you did was just take action, you could say, well, look, I'm taking so much action. Why is nothing materializing? Well, because there's nothing for it to organize itself around. It's just action, but it's, it has no coherence. So the idea is what gives shape to the action. The idea is what directs the action. So the, the, the action is coherent and therefore can emerge as something specific. If you don't have the idea first, then you could take action till the end of time and nothing specific would uh, emerge from that. It would just be chaos because the idea is that organizing principle that gives the coherence to the action. Now, um, as I've already pointed out, if all you do is just stay with the idea, but you don't take the action, then it also remains immaterial. And here's the important, uh, an important point, is that this process is cyclical. It's iterative. So I cannot rule, rule out the possibility that there has been some child at some point that never stumbled before walking. But for the overwhelming majority, there's a process in which the idea is there, the action is taken, the action is not immediately the complete manifestation of the idea. The idea is to walk. The initial expression of that, or the initial action of that, does not particularly resemble walking. In order for that, for that, um, that process to become complete, completely manifest, there has to be this iterative process where there's the idea, there's the action, then there's a comparison between the idea and the outcome of the action that gives feedback so that then there can be another action taken. It's in this way that we create everything. We create all of our experience in this way. So there's the idea, there's the action, then there's a comparison between the outcome of the action and the idea and that serves as feedback so that we can take yet another action. And that repeats over and over and over and over, possibly endlessly. This is why people who many of us could recognize as being uh, masters in their, whatever their uh, particular domain uh, might be, whatever their, their field of study or work is, um, you could have somebody who it, you recognize as one of the greatest masters of, um, of, of violin or uh, piano. And for that person, there's always more for them to refine and improve that. To you, you say, how could it get any better than that? But for them, they can always become better because because the there's this process continuing to go on there's always room for improvement because there's always going to be some kind of contrast between the expression and the idea and that serves as feedback that then allows for the next action which further refines that so what does this have to do with failure well Think about it. If a child wants to walk, but refuses to fail, they will never walk. It just stays at the, at the idea level. So there has to be a willingness to fail in order to uh, engage in this creative feedback loop. So there has to be the, the idea that that's first and foremost, and then there has to be action, but the action necessarily will not uh, produce exactly the perfect outcome. It will not exactly match the idea. And so that could be considered a failure. 
And initially, in many things, the, the first action so completely does not, it misses the mark so completely that we could consider that to be a, a supreme failure. You know, if the, if the image or the idea is to walk and uh, what happens is you don't, you don't even get up off the, you know, you don't even stand up at all and you just instead fall flat on your face, that, that could seem so completely, so complete of a failure that for many of us, if we're adverse to failure, we would stop there and never walk. This is an important point to understand because if you want some outcome in your life and you refuse to fail, then you're actually refusing to succeed. And, and I'm bringing this up for a variety of points, but one of them is that not too uh, infrequently, I, I get messages from people and they say, well, I've been... I've been working at trying to manifest this thing for uh, a week and it hasn't happened. Or I've been trying to manifest it for a month and it hasn't happened. I've been trying to manifest it for six months. It hasn't happened. It's a failure. But that's just a misunderstanding. See, it, it, you're never going to actually uh, arrive at the absolute perfect expression of the idea. And if you're sensitivity to the the gap between what it, the idea and the and the expression of it is so uh refined that you determine that any discrepancy is a complete failure then you're going to hold yourself back from uh really get, getting the real value of the whole process <laughs>